fair points. Um, me, let me try that again. Welcome to fair points. Um, uh, so it's nice to have all of you here. Um, uh, just a bit of uh, housekeeping to start. So next slide. Um, we, we'll be um, introducing ourselves. Um, this is a very much a team effort. Um, so first, uh, I'll introduce myself and then everyone else um, on the team can introduce themselves. But I'm Chris Erdman, and I'm at the American Geophysical Union. Um, and I work in the data leadership group. Uh, but so a bit of housekeeping. Um, uh, please stay on mute. Um, raise your hand if you have questions. Um, use the, uh, the reactions uh, button at the bottom for raising your hand. Um, the notes are for you, for us. Um, so uh, we're sharing those in, in the chat. Um, so please uh, um, participate. And then, um, yeah, just a welcome. So that you can see the notes and the slides. And the, and the next slide is actually our code of conduct. Um, so really, we're all learners here. Um, we're all, you know, we, this is a welcome space. Uh, we're all learning together. Um, so just some um, uh, aspects of our code of conduct. Uh, it's a reminder that we, just to be respectful, honest, inclusive, accommodating, appreciative. Um, uh, no, you know, do not attack or demean, disrupt, harass, or threaten. Um, be patient, allow others to speak and use the Zoom reactions and, and chat um, if you would like to voice something. And we uh, have included a link to our participation guidelines um, on the slide as well, which I think we shared as well. So if you wanted to uh, look at the link, but next slide. <clears throat> so just to give you a little bit of background, what, what is FairPoint? Um, it really has its um, genesis uh, from um, uh, the carpentries. Um, so there was a lesson being developed in the carpentries um, along uh, the lines of FAIR research. And you can sort of see a, 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 a screenshot of, of the lesson that was being developed. Um, it, 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 at some point, um, as we were working on that, and, and, and also uh, some other related uh, FAIR material in the carpentries, we realized that this was such an evolving space um, that it was, it was a little bit different than um, you know, the, the the other lessons that you see in the carpentries, um, um, it, it evolves so rapidly, all the stuff that's happening around FAIR, that we really needed to be more flexible, um, more you know, dynamic, as you can see here, um, and also inclusive, right? Because I think we're all um, working through what um, FAIR means as a community at the discipline level, um, at, overall as a community as well. Um, so um, yeah, next, next slide. Um, that was really the the um, the, the genesis, but um, as I mentioned, there was there was this interest even at sort of like the discipline level. Um, there were cases of like the the fair things, you know how how can we do this at at um, the various like topics and disciplines? How do we do this? And um, if anyone can recognize the actor, um, James Spader is demonstrating <laughs> this frustration uh, that maybe some of us are having. Um, so next slide. And you can see um, through this word cloud, there are a number of um, you know, topics and, and disciplines that have come up you know, that we would want to tackle um, in, in, in sort of addressing what FAIR means at, at, the, at that level. Um, so ne next slide. So um, where I, I think there, through all the conversations about um, um, how we can sort of create something that's more flexible and dynamic and how can we create fair points, we really touched upon a lot of the, the, the uh, bullet points, the, the items that you see here. So we, we, we knew this was sort of this, this was a diverse conversation. Um, we, um, we wanted to invite people in to share their experiences, their knowledge, you know, to be inclusive. Um, and, and identifying solutions. So not just uh, sort of speaking to this at sort of the general level um, and then um, sort of producing um, the output, this machine actionable um, output that can actually be um, searched, discoverable on the web, but discoverable in scholarly systems. Um, so it's essentially practice fair um, in making these materials um, um, more accessible, more, you know, more findable, um, um, and, and, you know, all, all these sort of ele other elements of FAIR. Um, and then, you know, we, we wanted to bring in um, the, the key keynote speakers. So 
um, essentially sort of people that were interested in, in you know, that, that, that uh, had developed maybe an expertise or, or wanted to speak about a particular topic or discipline to come in and speak about it, um, but really frame it, um, frame, frame the talk and frame this whole discussion um, in a way that, you know, again, would help with um, making this more discoverable um, where people can sort of quickly reference the material that, that's being discussed in a sort of top, top 10 or, you know, top things that you should, should know about this particular topic. Um, so essentially just verify um, the conversation, the discussion with the speaker through a mini sprint. Uh, so next, uh, and, and as you can see right there, we have, I almost forgot, uh, there's a sign up link. And uh, again, we're sharing the links to, to these slides. There's a sign up sheet. If you have an idea, if you wanted to, um, you know, do something with us, um, to um, really communicate something that you think is important, then please do sign up. Um, and the next slide. And just a little bit more about this uh, dynamic resource. So um, uh, we wanted to, to, to um, make this really collaborative. So this collaborative note taking, the Q and A, would would develop this this uh, this uh, resource that people could um, could reference, um, even if they couldn't couldn't attend. Um, they could they could reference it. Um, they could go back and and uh, view the the recordings, um, but also just quickly skim through that the highlights, um, but also the discussion if they wanted to to delve even further. Um, so um, you know, really kind of following this um, approach that um, you've seen with like uh, papers on simple rules, uh, like ten simple rules or top things to to know um, about a particular topic. Um, and you know, again, publish these these uh, summaries, these things using um, a resource like GitHub. Um, and you may have already noticed that we're, our notes, our collaborative notes, are in a tool called HackMD, which uh, is also helpful in converting to Markdown, um, and then also making it more discoverable. So publishing through a repository solution uh, to get a DOI as well uh, through like a community. So um, these were sort of the ideas that um, uh, really led to. Fair points that we would like to um, move forward with all of you, if you're interested, um, and and to really um, you know do this as a community. Uh, so next next slide. Um, so what are we looking for? Uh, we thought it would be good to um, uh, just demonstrate some of the examples that um, could help you sort of thinking about if you have an idea how how you could what you could uh, really bring to fair points. So I think I'm handing this over to. Uh, Katie, uh, who can yeah. introduce herself. Yeah, so uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Katie Knight. Um, I'm a data engineer at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. I sit in the Data Lifecycle and Scalable Workflows group um, in the National Center for Computational Sciences. Um, that's where all the supercomputing happens. Um, so the first, uh, for instance, um, it has to do with fair workflows. If you're not super familiar with what a workflow is, this is like a, a hybrid um, processual digital asset. You might consider it data, you might consider it software, or it, you might consider it a combination of both. Um, and there's a lot of considerations that you need to take into account when you're talking about what a fair workflow might look like. Um, because as a specialized kind of software, workflows have two properties that fairness fundamentally needs to address. Um, that's abstraction and composition. So in current workflow research, there's conflicting theoretical bases and abstractions for what constitutes a workflow system. Um, and so if you have a, two systems that use the same underlying abstractions, you can translate between the two of them. But if your models are completely distinct, um, workflows or system components, they're not likely exchangeable or interoperable. So that's a problem. Um, so as a for instance, when we're talking about workflows on high performance computing systems, um, you're going to be using distributed resources where each step in your workflow might be executed on a different node or a server. And our existing provenance standards like PROV from the W3C, um, they lack dedicated constructs to represent these underlying software or excuse me, hardware resource usage information. Um, and so if you try to include all of that information in one single PROV profile, you may end up with something that's completely incomprehensible to somebody else. So that's affecting your reusability, which specifies provenance. Um, so and provenance in and of itself, I mean, that's one of the, the 
elements under the R and FAIR. And this is really, really tricky with workflows because there's different ways that you can be granular about your workflow. And again, taking it to the HPC example, you might have lots and lots of different steps that you might try to consolidate or abstract into one particular thing. Um, and then you lose that downstream when you're talking about analytics and, and trying to understand exactly what happened when you got your result. So what I have here on this slide um, are some challenges and proposed community activities around FAIR workflows um, that are described in a lot more detail by my colleague, Rafael Ferrara da Silva. Um, he's also at Oak Ridge with me. Um, the link to the paper is at the bottom of the slide. Um, and the quote is from his paper, as are these challenges and community activities. Um, so you really, we need to think about what the FAIR principles for workflows are, since there is that relationship between software and data. Um, what exactly constitutes a FAIR workflow? Um, and what does the community think and, and, and define around the principles that is going to help workflows become FAIR? Um, there is an initiative uh, that Raphael um, and Carol Goebel are working on. There's a link to that, um, the Workflows Community Initiative. Um, this is to bring the community together, whether it's users, developers, researchers, facilities, to try to think about community resources and capabilities to help um, these related efforts, events, reports come together and have a, have a common place to, to discuss. Um, next slide. So another, for instance, um, is climate research. Um, so, and this is not really limited to climate data, but many other disciplines where you're producing dynamic, evolving research data. Um, and what is meant by that is this is a type of high volume data that may result from multiple contributing researchers, research institutions. Um, they might be released in different stages um, where more data may be added to a growing data set, revised and new versions, which is the case with climate research data or other long-term studies. Um, and when you have this type of evolving research data, data sets are going to be made available years before the end of the project um, and available for download, analysis, and publication. And so that's why it's important that we denote and cite which version and subset of the data we are referring to. And yesterday, I heard a really wonderful talk from um, Deb Agarwal at, uh, at Berkeley where she was talking about some of the particular projects that give a really good example of how com complex this is. So one was the Ameriflex carbon fiber network where you've got um, the flux of how carbon exchanges between biome and atmosphere, where you've got work at a central data center that's standardizing and building data products. Um, but it's, it's an international data set and it's used trying to understand different biomes and different climate models. And this can get really, really complicated. Um, so she mentioned another project called NGEE Tropics, where you've got from climate models, there's an uncertainty in particular regions like the tropics, where you have ecosystems operating in a different way um, in, say, like a northern deciduous forest. Um, so you have treating carbon exchange and life cycles the same doesn't work between these two different ecosystems. So there's some really, really complex stuff as a, for instance, in climate research. And some of the lessons learned so far is related to those two citations is you have a superset citation where you're giving credit to the data creators and providing statistics on data usage and literature, and then a subset citation where you're identifying part of the data underlying the article. Um, but there's a lot more discussion that needs to happen related to these types of, of initiatives. Next slide. Uh, yeah, so should I take over, Kate, or yeah? Cool. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Sarah Gabelli, and I am a project lead for metadata and curation at the SciLife Lab. And together with Chris, Katie, and many others behind the scenes today, uh, we've uh, we've come together to deliver uh, fair points. And as Katie mentioned, like there are a couple of examples of some of some of the fair related uh, practical uh, so solutions for for fair implementations that, and these have come up during our community discussions and there are many more examples that come up during these discussions so if you are interested in joining do sign up and uh, join us monthly but in addition to the community discussions that we have we do have the upcoming events which i'm going to give you a sneak peek today uh, about the uh the most um recent ones so in february for instance we have a talk by uh, Chris Hart Gurning, and I apologize beforehand for my uh, for my pronunciation of the names. Um, where, but do join us in February to learn more about open source publishing platform uh, research equals, which is 
will be launched actually in a couple of days. So, um, and there you can learn about how to publish your entire research work um, with the autonomy to make all different types of research outputs findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. So in this uh, talk in February, uh, Chris will show us how to get started with this new way of pub a publishing system and how we can also uh, contribute to its future development and shape. So this this is coming up in February. So do sign up to our event series uh, that's that are on month a monthly basis. Um, in March, uh, we will hear from Harsh Pantida. So I believe Harsh is with us here today. But we, in March, we'll, you're going to get the chance to hear him talk more in details about um, the interplay between the regulatory requirements that we have, such as uh, GDPR and FAIR. So how do we actually share personal data in a fair but responsible manner? And this talk will explore a, how do we utilize fair metadata to ensure that the data is shared and used legally um, while enhancing its reusability? And what can the fair principles do to improve how we deal with the legal compliances? So it's a very interesting topic, very related. And you can see the cross-disciplinary, um, how we're pooling in the, the knowledge from, from a, in a cross-disciplinary fashion to learn from each other. So it's super exciting. I'm looking forward to both events. and. Uh, please do uh, sign up uh, with us. And um, basically, while this might seem as a being a research focused or driven by researchers and the needs, we believe that this use cases will be extremely engaging and valuable to anyone who's involved in the research e ecosystem. So this includes like uh, folks who are involved in uh, support research activities, such as uh, myself uh, coming from research data management, or we have data stewards in the group. We also have uh, research um, software engineers or developers and, you know, from across the board. And as I mentioned earlier, we do really need to pool all our collective knowledge to be able to answer the big questions, right? And um, we do uh, also acknowledge that FAIR uh, needs a look from a more global perspective. So we, our goal is to also make sure that we include diverse voices to make FAIR accessible to a broader range of people. And we also realize that FAIR might look different in real life for researchers and depending where they are. So this means what in reality that we're really keen to include relatable examples from research practices in different regions in the world that uh, that are you know compatible with fair and uh, and show us how it's done so we want to extend not only beyond fields and disciplines but we want to extend beyond geographical uh, dimensions so to to learn how fair translates into practice and what it means to our global community. So for, for that to happen, we need to support the input from the global perspective and uh, support also equitable access to that knowledge. So uh, hopefully uh, that's one of the things that, like that we work on into how to provide it in different languages or in an interoperable manner and um, work to, to advance this, uh, how, how do we do fair globally? <laughs> So if that all sounds good, please do visit our website, have a look around and uh, learn more about who we are and what we're doing and, you know, what our next events and community discussions are happening. So and you can sign up um, to, to the event series, connect with us on Slack and Twitter and, you know, um, spread the word. And I'm um, going to wrap this up because we are going to have a, a, a very hands on moment next. But before I do that, I want to thank the whole team and everybody who's helped us get this far. And these are the people you're going to meet in our community discussions. And uh, also our supporters, the, you know, the multiple different organizations that helped us get there and, you know, um, support our work in various ways. So thank you all so much. And um, I'm happy to take some questions now, um, and, but I'll stop the recording here so we have a bit more 
free freedom. So um, how do I stop the recording? <laughs>